Hey guys, what's happening? Probably the biggest question I've been getting is how do you do pixel mapping in Sound Switch? Well, that'll be a pretty short video because Sound Switch doesn't offer pixel mapping. Well, that's kind of up to debate. Many people define pixel mapping as when your software maps your lights to individual pixels, or at least a sample of an area of a video source. You can think of it as a really low res video display. At the time of creating this video, you cannot map a video source to your lights and sound switch. But on the other hand, pixel mapping is sometimes synonymous with creating cool chases that look like animations, whether by extensive programming or using a software's built-in effects engine. You can compare pixel mapping to animation. Animation is just a bunch of static drawings that when played one after another, creates motion. Pixel mapping is just a bunch of scenes that when put together in a chase, it creates motion. I hope you love my beautiful artwork I made in MS Paint. And I'm not gonna lie, the pixel mapping experience in Sound Switch is not the easiest. And overly complex designs are gonna be almost impossible to implement. I'll show you some tips and tricks on creating some awesome pixel mappings and how to speed up your workflow so that you can unlock the potential of your pixel mappable lights. And you know, you might be asking, should I even use Sound Switch because I want to pixel map my lights and it's not the easiest? I still think the pros outweigh the cons, so I definitely think Sound Switch is definitely worth using. You can see my video review of Sound Switch, where I discuss it a little bit more. This can be all very time consuming, even if you're an expert at programming a Sound Switch, which is why I've launched my Light Design Marketplace on my website darylbennett.net slash soundswitch. I'll talk more about this at the end of the video. So this is an advanced topic video that assumes you know the basics of Sound Switch programming. At the time of making this video, I don't have any videos on how to do the basics, but I'm planning on making some. When I do, I'll leave a link in the description below. For my example today, I'll be using my Shovei Wellsticks 180s. They have 16 individual zones that can be programmed, and Sound Switch treats these pixel mappable lights as groups, and each zone as an individual light. So as you can see here, there are 16 lines representing each of these programmable zones and it treats them as an individual light. And for any given time interval, you can assign an intensity and or color to each zone within the same fixture to try to simulate movement or texture. That's basically all there is to pixel mapping in a nutshell. So I'm gonna show you six different ways that you can do this. And so the first way is to use the built-in effects engine. So we're gonna do a color chase at first. I can select the whole row, but it doesn't really matter because I'm just gonna show you an example. So we do the color chase, we do the group. And so this is good because you can select a background color and a foreground color. And unfortunately, this chase only pushes around a single pixel but you can still get a pretty good effect with it. The longer the interval between scenes, the choppier it is, the shorter, the smoother it will be. So I want this to be very smooth, so we'll do a 30 second note, and we will do a bounce, just because that sounds like fun. And I like having the background color be black, because it makes the pixel mapping a little more dramatic, and we'll keep that purple, why not? As you can see, it applied the effect, and I don't want the this fixture to match the intensity of the master track, so we'll apply an on intensity. So unfortunately, Sound Switch doesn't have square pulses, so this is kind of a hack. There we go. As you can see, we have a single pixel going up and down. So unfortunately, we can't just copy this effect and paste it in each of these fixtures. We have to either reapply the effects to each one, or we have to copy each row, row by row, into the next fixtures. And yeah, that's not an easy task. Let's we'll just take another quick look at this. Notice that it's pushing a single pixel. But yeah, we can see the journey of our pixel as it goes down our fixture. And we chose 30 second note, which is the shortest interval. And we can see that it's, with each line, it's offsetting by a 30 second note. And so just for our demonstration, let's do a bigger interval. Let's do a color chase. Let's 
let's do a bigger interval like 16th note so we should expect that to double in size let's do black again let's just forward this time so as you can see the interval offset is also bigger as we have this be bigger and then just for a demonstration let's do really choppy let's just do a quarter note and obviously we only have this going for a single measure so it's not gonna go all the way down to the tube all right and now let's use one of these built-in chases let's do the follow chase let's just do it for a couple measures we want it to be smooth I want to push four pixels down the tube and the and if you do intensity chases like this that's kind of cool because you can just assign the color at the group level and if you want to change it later that's like I want to do a color transition it's easier to do that instead of reassigning the color in every single row so here we go so as you can see it's a little bit wonky because it's pulsating with every interval so with every 30 second note it's pulsating and that's a little bit annoying. <laughs> It'd be a lot smoother if it was just a single pulse instead of pulsing four times. So let's go ahead and do that. So I want to push four pixels, so here we go. So this is an eighth note interval. So in the example before it was pulsing for four, four of these 30 second intervals and then it was waiting for 12. So this is the pattern. I could just copy and paste this pattern on each line with the 30 second note offset interval and then come back up here to the first line to repeat it. It's better to apply our pattern across the entire track first. Okay, now that I've done that, let's apply a color. So if I wanna push four pixels down the tube with this pattern, I have to do it every 30 second note. As you can see, like there's an overlap of four pixels right here. So if I wanted to offset it every 16th note, so two of these 30 second note intervals, as you can see, the overlap would only ever be two pixels, which is fine. It just really depends on the kind of effect you want to create. So what I can do is with each line, I can just copy this row that I created all the way to the bottom. There we go. If this weren't just an example, I'd probably want to ensure that I had empty intensity for the start of my pattern to ensure that my fixture doesn't use the master track intensity. This is just an example, so let's just start playback like a measure in. So as you can see here, it's a little bit smoother. It's not pulsating to the beat. Awesome. And it's pretty easy to copy and paste this offset that you could do it with all of your fixtures. I mean, I'm not going to lie, it'll take a little bit, but it'll be like three minutes instead of 30 minutes or three hours. Because you're not programming every single pixel, you're only programming one line of pixels and then copying, pasting across all of your fixtures. So you can also play with the intensity. You can do like the flash and fade, or you could do a square pulse like that, and they will look different. And you can also play with the duration of these. So you could have this, if you want like to push eight pixels, you could do that. And also you could restart the pattern. So like have this be closer for a different effect. So you can play around with it. All right, so now we're gonna do the rainbow effect. Every time I see an advertisement for a pixel tube, it always seems to be doing this rainbow effect. And I think it looks pretty cool, and I think it looks great in a mobile DJ setting. So this one is going to be similar to our color chase. I'm just going to have my intensity be on, so we can't do a big square pulse. We can do a fade out, just to the track, not to the group. Create a dot right there, scoot it over, there we go, it's 
it's on. So we just create a color pattern for a single row. And I want it to be smooth, so I'm going to offset it every 30 second note interval. And I want to do four again. So let's remember the colors of the rainbow. Since I'm doing this in an interval of eighth notes, that means I need like eight colors. So that is what I am doing. And it'd be super nice if SoundSwitch gave us a shortcut for applying color. Because left clicking gets old really fast. So this is our pattern. Let me apply it across the row. Right, let's just copy this. And you know what, just for our demonstration, let's not have it go down, let's have it go up. So let's start from the 16th row, like this. Scrolling is hard. There we go. <laughs> and we apply this, but with an offset of every 30 second note. Let's just apply this all the way up. And so for this top one, I'm just going to apply the color black because as this color is going up, like right here in this space, I don't want this to be listening to the master track, although it wouldn't be the worst thing. So here we go. All right, now I'm going to show you the sparkle. This is a secret sauce. It's also secret sauce because it's super easy to implement and it looks cool. So let's just apply our sparkle color. So it doesn't have to be white. You could have this be all sorts of different colors or have different colors for each fixture. So let's go to the, the chase. So what computers do really good is generating randomness. And that's what we want here. Let's do 16th notes. We could do 30 second notes. I like 16th notes for this effect. And then here we go. All right, and this is gonna be our final one and this creates texture and I feel like this is really cool. And I know the Asteras have like a built-in effect to this, but you can simulate it in sound switch. So we're gonna group. This random intensity. I think this looks really cool. Because honestly, we could just have like our fixture just be on all of the time, but this just adds some texture and I think it looks pretty cool. Well, thank you for watching this video to the end. I hope you found it illuminating. So this programming stuff, you know, it can be fun, but it can also be really time consuming. I know a lot that everybody has the time to dedicate to programming their lights. So I know a lot of you would rather outsource your light programming. That's why I've decided to launch my light show marketplace. So right now I have a show for the show of it. Well, six 180s where I have 32 auto loops and each one has pixel mapping. So you can unlock the potential of these fixtures. And in the future, I may offer light shows for other light fixtures. So if there is a fixture or a software you would like me to create light shows for, please leave me a comment below and I will try to add that to the light show marketplace. Until the next video, I'll see you later.